So welcome to another episode, I won't say exciting, uh, of Daft, Dumb Apple Farmer Talks. Today we could call it Desperate Apple Farmer Talks, Dreary Apple Farmer Talks, Down in the Dump Apple Farmer Talks. We're talking frost today and it ain't pretty. Blues, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, death and misery. We've had some troubles in the orchard. Uh, last three nights have uh, been pretty damn cold. We had 28 as a low, we had 23 as a low, and we've had 30 as a low. Now, apples, as they develop, become more and more sensitive to cold. So early on, uh, silver tip, you know, you can handle down in the teens pretty easy. Uh, as you grow, the, the bud develops and the minimum temperature that it can take, it goes up and up. So right now, these are pretty much at full pink going into bloom. And even within a particular cluster, the development of this one, this king bloom that's ready to open up, is gonna make it more susceptible to frost damage than something like this side bloom that's still kind of covered up. It's got a little bit of protection there. So what we've seen in the literature, and that's all based on historical data, whether out of Washington or Michigan or New York, is that at this stage of pink, we could, at 28 degrees, we lose roughly 10% of the bloom or 10% of those flower buds are gonna to be toast. At 25, we're gonna lose 90% of them. We had 23. So by rights, we should be toast. I mean, the entire frickin' orchard should be toast. And there's some damage, there is some damage. But what we're gonna show you today is that there's a lot of different things that go into deciding uh, what gets damaged and what doesn't. There's a lot of this stuff that, quite frankly, I have not a frickin' clue why it didn't get damaged or why it did. Um, but there are some pretty good um, reasons why we see the damage that we see. The first thing is, as I said earlier, the stage of development has a lot to do with it. As we saw in this freeze event, um, something like this that is ready to open up I mean, it's just those tender flower bits are just below the surface here. There's not much protection. There's not much insulating them from that cold temperature. So we would expect that those are gonna be a lot more susceptible to this, to, to a frost than something like this that's still got some of these sepal leaves covering up the, uh, the bud a bit. The other thing is the location in the orchard. Now we are at the lowest spot in the orchard right here. This is always the place where we have the most damage. Now you gotta understand that generally on these uh, what are called radiative freezes, we have very still conditions. There's not much, right, right now we have probably a three to five mile an hour wind that's kind of shifting things around. If we'd have had that that night, we would have had very uniform temperatures throughout the orchard, but we didn't. The wind went dead still, the sky cleared up, and we knew we were in for some cold, cold stuff. Um, what happens in those cases is with no wind to push it around, the cold air settles. That's why fruit growers always are looking for a high location with places for the cold air to move away from it. Cold air moves like water and it just flows away from the, the top of the hill and flows down towards the bottom. Here we have a little bit of a pool back here. So that cold air tends to pool here before it slowly drains out into the nearby uh, reservoir. And as a result, this little area pools cold air and we would expect that regardless of the stage of development, these are gonna be the most susceptible uh, bloom and so we'll we'll do some cutting now when we cut buds we cut I guess you'd call it log longitudinally we're gonna we're gonna dissect this bud so we're looking 
at the various bits of the flower. And you guys, if you weren't sleeping in your biology class or botany class, you will remember that there's the stamens, the male part of the flower, and the pistils, the female part of the flower. The pistil is connected through, I believe, the style uh, down into the ovaries. And that's what we're paying attention to. We're paying attention to the ovaries where there should be a total of five different potential uh, seed areas, each with two potential seeds, so a total of 10 seeds. And you can see on this, it's just toast. It's that ovary area right in here, even though the flower parts up here look just fine. They're nice and yellow like they should be. This should be a nice vibrant green. And instead it's the color of coffee gone ugly, right? I mean, that is not a good looking picture. So we know that that particular bud is gone. That, that flower is toast. Um, it's better luck next year for that guy. But if we were to cut this one that had the sepals, we'll just see. And there you are. So this one, you can see the ovaries look really good. They're that bright green. That's what we want to see. The flower parts are still looking good, but that isn't usually what gets the damage. It's usually these ovaries down here that that's what tells us whether we're going to have a fruit from that or not. And this looks really good. So there again, it's just, just that little bit of extra protection from those sepals that is covering up the petals, that is covering up the flower parts. And that's what did it. So now we've moved, oh, probably a total of three to five feet in elevation up from the bottom of that pool. And we're going to cut some buds here. And um, it's just amazing how just that kind of elevation gain can, what it can do for you. So if we take, this is a fairly developed king right here. So now we're going to cut that. Well, that one's toast as well. You can see here, those ovaries are, are really toasted there. This one has a little bit of damage, but not as bad. There's some potential life in that one. So we're checking the king blooms, which are the most advanced, the least, product, uh, the least protected because of the fact that the bloom is almost completely opened up. So there's, there's a good one. Again, we're about five feet in elevation gain. Now we're starting to cut some of these that are good. These are the king blooms. The other thing is if we, so it, it, I was just checking them, they're about maybe three and a half, four feet off the ground. If we go up another, say three feet, up here to maybe seven, close to eight feet off the ground and check them, there's a good chance we're gonna see less damage. And that's a good one. There we have. Beautiful. Often it just takes uh, a few feet of elevation difference to make the difference between a, a viable uh, bud and one that's been ruined by frost. The least bit of elevation gain can make significant difference on these nights when you have very still conditions and very stratified air. If you had a laser level and just took it and started uh, at the, let's say at this level, where everything above that is, is uh, good and everything below that is basically toast, and you just ran that laser level out straight, you'd end up to where the viable buds in the tree, the viable bloom starts going up in the tree and up in the tree and up in the tree and up in the tree until it's above the tree and everything in the tree is, is not viable anymore. It's truly amazing how, how uh, monolithic that gets. This, this cold air really pools just like you would expect in a bathtub. You know, it just kind of evens out. There's no, if there's no wind to disperse it, it just, you know, you can have maybe if, you're, if your critical temperature might be say 28 degrees, you might have 
just above 20, you know, just a couple of tenths of a degree above at this level and a couple of degrees, a couple of tenths of a degree below at this level. And that's, that's all it takes. This freeze was particularly cold and the damage that we see is actually way less than we would expect. And we think that's because essentially the temperature was cold. It was extremely cold, colder than, than we would want by a long shot, but only for a short period of time. And in the two nights that got the coldest, we saw that somewhere around five o'clock, we started to pick up just a little bit of cloud cover and just a little bit of wind. And that was enough to raise the temperature up. So we think that the reason we don't see more damage than we do, the reason we don't see the damage that we should from this freeze is because of that. We just didn't have the length of time with the freeze that it would take to really ruin the entire crop, which by rights, to be honest, we probably shouldn't have an apple in this orchard anymore, but, but it looks pretty good, you know? So we can sing about the blues um, and we can drink about the blues, blues. but uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about having luck on your side. As a friend of mine used to say, it's uh, better to be lucky than good, and that's us in a nutshell this year. So stay tuned. We'll be looking more. I mean, this is cutting, you know, maybe it's 100 buds or 200 buds in this orchard that probably has... I don't know, 100 million buds. I don't know how many there are here, but there's a lot of them. And the, the truth is in the pudding. The, diff, the least bit of elevation gain can mean the difference between having fruit and not having fruit. What was I saying before? <laughs>